Okay, so last time we took the derivative of the function f of x, y equals to 5 plus t to the fourth from x to y with respect to t. And then we differentiated that with respect to y. So now we need to evaluate that derivative. So all we're going to do, so, okay, let me highlight. I think it would help if we, if I highlighted this, um, the x variable and the y variable or the x input, the y input. So that means we're going to replace x, every instance of x with negative 2, and every instance of y with 3. But in this case, our partial derivative does not contain any, any x's. You know, it has only y's. So that'll be 5 times y, which is 3, to the fourth power, which is 3 to the fourth. That's 81. 81 times 5, that's 405. So that is the value of the slope for this function given in a weird way. All right, <clears throat> so let's pay special attention to letter C, which in this, because in this case we're going to take the derivative of a, of a more elaborate function. Well, we need to be uh, fluent in this kind of problem because again, these are gonna come later when it comes to um, other, other kinds of problems. So, so let's see. Okay, so we're going to differentiate g of x, y, which is the integral of e to the t squared from x, y to x squared plus y squared. All right, well, in this case, I cannot simply do the following, which is, uh, in a way, cancel out the derivative operator with the integral symbol and simply change the, uh, what's it called? The, the u with a t, because our limits of integration are no longer just a single variable or with a, with a simple power. So this is what we're going to do. Well, to begin with, let's look at the integral right here. We, we're trying to integrate e to the t squared, which is not an elementary function. What do I mean by elementary function? It doesn't have an antiderivative like, um, you know, like sine, cosine. So unless we had a t right here that stands at u du part of the problem, so in this case we can't, unless you use power series and convert that exponential function into a power series. But in this case, well, that's just an approximation to say five terms, seven terms. It's not gonna give us um, an exact result, okay? So that's not the way we're gonna go. So we're gonna go, uh, we'll simply go about thinking that this is um, just some function. So let me, let me denote this derivative first. So the derivative with respect x of the integral from xy to x squared plus y squared of e to the t squared dt. Well, so, and, and again, here, <clears throat> Since this function does not have an elementary antiderivative, well, let's just think of this as some function f of t, right? So this is what we're going to do. Take the partial derivative with respect x of the integral of x y from x y to x squared plus y squared of f of t dt, right? It doesn't matter what f of t in the end is. Well. Again, all we need to keep in mind is that, well, so when we integrate little f, that becomes big F. Later, we will differentiate it again to become once again a little f with a little twist, rather a big twist. Okay, so what is this? So that's the partial derivative with respect x. Well, the integral of little f, that's going to give us big F of t, right? And we're going to evaluate this between, between the limits x, y to x squared plus y squared. And well, here's where we use now the first fundamental theorem. That is upper limit minus lower limit. So keep the partial derivative operator. That is big F of upper limit x squared plus y squared minus big F of x, y. All right? limit minus lower limit. So what is this bit, what is this uh, partial derivative operator going to cause into our, exp in our expression here? Well, 
So the partial derivative of f of x squared plus y squared minus the partial derivative of, with respect x of big F of x, y. So in the previous example, we came up with a big F of y minus big F of x. We took the derivatives, we ended up with little f. It's going to be the same here. Now, the plot twist here is, so partial derivative of big F is, again, little f of x squared plus y squared. But did you see how this is really a composite function? So we need to use a chain rule. That's what chain is in this case. We need a chain rule. So we need, because we're differentiating partially with respect x, we need to differentiate x squared plus y squared with respect x, whose derivative is 2x, all right? So that's the upper limit minus lower limit, which is the partial derivative of, well, the derivative of big F, which is little f of the same x, y, times, by chain rule, the derivative of x, y with respect x. What is that? Y, all right? So we're done with the derivative. So, so now here is where we need to relate this f of t, all right, with this f of x squared plus y squared and f of x squared plus y squared. Well, if f of t equals e to the t squared, essentially what we're going to do here is to replace, whoops, to replace e to the quantity squared times 2x minus e to the quantity squared times y. So, and in this case, the quantity squared will be x squared plus y squared and xy, all right? So there's not much to rewrite here. No, you don't want to expand the binomial in the exponent. Leave it like that. That's fine. That's e to the x squared plus y squared squared. Multiply the 2x in the front if you want. Minus y e to the maybe x squared, x squared y squared. This one is easy to expand, right? So that is our partial derivative with respect x for this new function. Now, so you can see... Uh, a more elaborate extension of this second fundamental theorem of calculus applied with partial derivatives, right? So, okay, so, okay, now that we need to evaluate this at the point zero, zero, that is, uh, zero, whatever you see the letter x, zero, whatever you see the letter y, so that is two times zero, e to the zero squared plus zero squared, squared minus zero times e to the zero squared times zero squared, which in this case is, it goes all the way to zero, all right? So it's all zeros. And that's how we use, again, um, the second fundamental theorem with partial derivatives. So, Okay, let's wrap up the section uh, using the limit definition for partial derivatives. Remember, finding the derivative of a function f of x using the limit definition. Well, so of course, uh, we're going to do at least one example uh, with, with partial derivatives. And that's, uh, that's how we're going to wrap up the, the, the section, right? Well, so, and again. So let's recall what the limit definition for a single variable function is. So y prime, which is the limit of f of x plus h minus f of x over h as h approaches zero. So in a similar way, so we can describe or represent the partial derivative using the limit definition except that the parentheses for the functions is no longer just going to be x plus h, so it's going to be x plus h comma y minus the function f of x y, that is, if we are differentiating with respect x. On the other hand, if we are differentiating with respect y, we shift the y by, by uh, plus h, and same, we subtract the original function and divide by h. 
So what are we doing essentially here? So we are just making the change with respect x, keeping the y constant. We're making the change with respect y, keeping the x constant, as if we were doing it the other way. Well, let's do one example using the limit definition. Well, let's see. It's on the, it's on the next page. And by the way, there's a little typo here. It's supposed to be a y in here, right? Not an x. OK. <clears throat> So given a, a relatively simple function, uh, polynomial, so to speak, yep, 3x squared, y squared plus 2x. Okay, let's, uh, let's use the limit definition to, to find the partial derivative with respect x and with respect y. We're going to do both, actually. All right? So let's get f of x plus h, y. That is, replace every instance of x with an x plus h. So that'll be 3 times x plus h, y squared, plus 2 times x plus h. I'm going to do the same for f of x, comma, y plus h equals to 3x, y plus h, squared, plus 2x. Right? Because we're going to need these two expressions to compute our limit, so let's see. Um, so the partial derivative of the function with respect x, that equals the limit of f of x plus h, comma y, minus f of x, y, over h as h approaches 0. All right, so let's substitute what we had. The f of x plus h comma y, which is our first expression, we shifted by x plus h in the variable x, of course. So that'll be our, okay, number one, notation, limit notation throughout. That is 3 times x plus h, y squared, plus 2 times x plus h, minus careful when subtracting the original function because the subtraction will affect the entire function, the sign of the entire function. That is 3xy squared plus 2x. Everything divided by h. All right. <clears throat> okay, so number one, uh, how about we distribute, um, we distribute the three and we distribute the y squared to these two terms. That's going to give us, well, number one, limit h approaches 0 of 3xy squared plus 3h, oh, I forgot, no, yeah, 3hy squared. And then let's distribute the 2 here, plus 2x plus 2y. Minus the original function, change the sign on, this, the sign on these two terms, 3xy squared minus 2x, everything divided by h, all right? Actually, we can already cancel out some of the terms, you know? We can cancel out the 2x, the 2x, and the negative 3xy squared with positive 3xy squared. In a similar way that you were able to cancel a lot of the terms when you first learn derivatives using the limit definition. So the process should be very, very reminiscent of what we did back in Calculus 1. So, uh, what are we going to be left with? Well, that is the limit 3hy squared plus 2y. Uh huh. Plus 2y, or it's 2x plus 2h right here, not y. I don't know where I got the y from. Plus 2h plus 2h over h. As h approaches 0. Well, in this case, notice how we can divide out one factor of h. Well, let's factor it out first before dividing it out. <clears throat> h times 3y squared plus 2 over h. Divide out the h's. Limit as h approaches 0 of 3y squared plus 2. And well, in this case, our limit expression doesn't have any, any h's to substitute the h equals to 0. So it's just going to be the constant, if you will, which is 3y squared plus 2. 
Now, using the general power rule or the differentiation rules that we used to find partial derivatives in the previous lecture, uh, it should give us the same result. Okay, the partial derivative of 3xy squared will just differentiate x, which is 1, times the constant 3y squared, 3y squared. The derivative of 2x with respect x equals to 2. Right? Same result. So that's the partial derivative with respect x. Now let's get the partial derivative with this with respect y. So that's uh, partial of f with respect of y. And that equals, what's that? Uh, limit 3x y plus h squared plus 2x minus the original function, again, 3xy squared plus 2x. <clears throat> All right, that divided by h, as h approaches 0. Well, um, to simplify it first, we need to expand the binomial y plus h squared. And well, there's a couple of ways to expand the binomial. You want to do the, the FOIL approach? Well, go for it. I prefer to go about, uh, what's that? <clears throat> the square binomial when you have a plus or minus b quantity squared. That's always a squared, b squared. And in the middle, plus or minus 2ab, depending on whether you have a uh, sum or a difference inside uh, of the parentheses that you're going to square. All right, so I'm going to I'm going to take that approach. So that'll give us uh, no, not here, maybe here. Limit h approaches zero of three x times y squared plus two h y plus h squared plus two x minus three x y squared minus 2x, everything divided by h. So let's distribute the 3x over the terms in parentheses, and, all, and then we will be able to cancel out some of the terms in a similar way we did before with part a of the problem, that is limit, as h approaches 0, 3xy squared, 3 times 2, careful with the coefficient, that's uh, 6 hxy plus 3h squared x plus 2x, well actually I can cancel out the 2x right here, minus 3xy squared, also I can cancel out this, um, so whatever you can cancel at once, don't keep writing a lot, don't waste a lot of time writing in necessary terms, so that is over h, that's equal to the limit as h approaches 0, 6hxy plus 3h squared x, and that's it, right? Over h. Well, and again, so you might notice a pattern. I mean, it, it's the same as back in Calc 1. The idea is to factor a quotient h over h, numerator, denominator, or well, depending on, on how you learn this formula, you may have learned the h version or the delta x version. Either way, it's the same thing, and the pattern is the same. To cancel out that quotient that causes the troublesome 0 over 0, which is still the case in here. If for some reason you get stuck on on this, well, maybe just double check your calculations, all right? So h times 6xy plus 3h x over h, what is that going to be? Well, that's the limit, h approaches 0, um, that is 6xy, so divide out the h's, 6xy plus 3hx, and in this case, notice how we have a term containing an h that can be evaluated for h equals to 0. That's going to be 0 times 3 times x, that's just going to be 0, that's fine. Final answer, 6xy. Is that the partial derivative of the given function using the differentiation rules? Does that look about right? <coughs> All right, let's verify the work. Well, so here we're differentiating this term with respect to y. So we have y squared, multiply the coefficient 2 by 3, that's a 6xy, 2 minus 1, 6xy. 
this term does not contain any y's, it's constant, so just zero, and yes, indeed, that's the answer, all right? And I believe with this, we finished the section, right?